Vamos. We will continue with the uh, next speaker, Ferran Clade Clavel. He is head of innovation and digital media audiences at the CCMA. For 15 years, he has participated in the creation and development of the CCMA's interactive services, portals for uh, TV3 and Catalonia Radio, TV3 a la carta portal, applications for mobile phones and tablets and connected TV services. He has also promoted interactive documentary in, on TV3 and is the co-author of several books such as Digital Audio Visual Communications. He has been a member of the Urian Various Editions of the Digital Emmy Awards and the Webby Awards. And um, he is now focused in uh, interactive documentaries and he's going Well, thank you for your invitation, particularly to you, Arnau. Uh, my role is a little bit uh, complicated because uh, when, we, when we talked about this with Arnau, when we talk about uh, my presentation in the docs, uh, We wa I wanted to present the results of the um, agenda on uh, uh, for interactive documentary, but today it's not finished and we cannot uh, present uh, the results of the projects that, uh, that we hope that next year we can present the results of the projects that we have supported, uh, the projects on uh, interactive documentary. I wanted to tell you about our current situation in terms of interactive um, A documentary at TV3, and I wanted to tell you about what we have done in the past, what we're doing today, and give you an idea about how a broadcaster, uh, from our point of view, uh, focuses on interactive documentary, which is a bit different from other uh, points of view, maybe. First of all, TV3 is a TV that is uh, always set on documentaries and linear, on linear TV. And not only that, uh, uh, they, you know, we invest a lot in documentaries, but they broadcast it in prime time in, on, t on TV. It's uh, one of the few uh, broadcasters in Europe uh, that does that. Uh, competing with other very important, uh, very uh, popular shows and uh, Uh, sometimes when I see a documentary on prime time, I think it's not going to work, but it does work, actually, surprisingly. People are receptive, uh, responsive to this kind of content. We have a bulletin on documentaries, on the genre. If you're interested, there is a, fo uh, a form that you can uh, subscribe To, to receive a news bulletin, to receive our news, uh, latest news uh, of festivals, the different uh, contests uh, that take place so, so that you are up to date, up to speed. And I wanted uh, to give you a brief uh, historical overview because we have pioneers. We arrived early. Well, I had uh, never heard about, 2000, about web talks in 2007 when we started with this genre. We did talk about interactive documentaries and we strongly sat on a documentary based on the Guernica painting by Picasso, the history of the painting, what had happened to the uh, painting after it was painting, uh, its journeys, the whole trajectory and the history of the painting. And it was an important bet for us, an important investment, particularly for that time. We're talking about 2007, the beginning of the crisis. And it was a project... Uh, that was broadcast uh, on television and it also had uh, three interactive uh, pillars. One was online, a web, what we would call a web doc uh, today, a version for digital interactive TV. So you could use it with your remote control, access uh, interactive web doc on TV, on your TV, and another version for the Media, Media Center, which is a Microsoft uh, technology, which was not uh, very successful in the end, but that wanted to include inter the Internet on TV, uh, <coughs> including uh, there is to, to provide the advantages of the Internet on to TV, but it wasn't very successful. To give you an idea of the notion and on TV, you can use it with um, remote control. You could activate uh, the, the red button, for example, of uh, interactive services in your remote control. And then you could uh, cons uh, look up information, Uh, summarized uh, version of the web doc because the graphics that we could have on TV back then is not what we can do today 
and graphic uh, in direction, the type of contents that we can include back then were not as they are today. But we also it also allowed for uh, user interaction and participation through the remote control. We're talking about 2007. Uh, this is the online version, the traditional, the conventional web doc of the Guernica. Uh, you will see later on that it's still accessible. And this version also included a, a game, sort of a game, well, uh, an entertainment, a piece of entertainment, an interactive piece of entertainment, because we believe that documentary could be serious, but also it's, it's also true to uh, to make it a little more, a little lighter, like a game. And the interactive game was taught, was called Shafrazi Experience. He was an activist from New York when the Guernica was exhibited in New York. He went with he sprayed the painting in the museum. And uh, we we put up this experience on the internet, uh, and we wanted users to paint on the painting. And then uh, it was also uh, that those creations were also exhibited in a separate gallery. It could also be done through the remote control, but it's not so much uh, not not uh, rudimentary uh, technology, but the internet on included in the, in the television. It was a very interesting experience, a wonderful experience. It allows us uh, to be finalists at the Emmy Awards. We did not got we did not get the award, but we were finalists. It was a great event, a great opportunity for us. And here you can see in the docu-based directory of the <coughs> MIT, uh, it, this documentary is also included, and you can also watch the documentary online if you're interested from there. After this experience, we wanted to take it a step further, further, and uh, to set on to set everything to set on a documentary that is going to be only for one day on TV. It's a very significant uh, investment for just one day. And the web doc is permanently online, and uh, the, ex the the window of exposure is very short. It's during its bro broadcasting, and uh, so we created a documentary series called El Diaries de Pascal, uh, the Pascal's uh, diaries. Uh, a blending uh, fiction and reality and um, in Spain after the um, the civil war and and every week the web doc uh, grew in contents as the story was growing on TV as well it was a way to give it more exposure because it was um, it was on TV for several weeks and this was in 2008 so a long time ago and then the desert, <laughs> because for reasons that you all know, in Spain we have had a lot of uh, difficulties in the audiovisual industry and we had to slow down and even put a stop to many of those initiatives. And when we stop uh, uh, these uh, documentary activities is when uh, the documentaries, interactive uh, documentaries, were appearing all over the world, and we were very, we were very envious, envious, and uh, we couldn't do it because there were no resources to do it. And uh, then we started getting out of the tunnel, and this year uh, we opened a tender for the production of interactive documentaries, and it was. It was about uh, testing the ground to see if there were good ideas out there uh, to create interactive documentaries in Catalonia. Uh, we opened the tender blindly, so to speak, in an experimental way. We wanted to see if we uh, got interesting ideas. 28 projects were submitted, uh, all of them very well, uh, very, very elaborated, very elaborate and very interesting. And uh, we should be presenting the selected uh, uh, project and uh, tangible results, but we're not there yet, but we hope that we will be able to do so in the next few weeks. Regarding this uh, contest, this tender, it is different uh, from others of its kind, because when a broadcaster opens them, uh, they want 
they want a documentary, interactive direct documentaries to be in line with linear documentaries. But in on TV, in TV3, we don't do it. We, we are interested, if even if it is not uh, that related to a linear documentary. We want to experiment with new languages, with new ways of telling stories, which are not necessarily linked uh, to the TV, to the linear to linear TV. But it's also an interesting factor, and we are always uh, in keen to try both formats. And also we wanted to play around with uh, smartphones. It has been mentioned and La Fura del Baos has told us about the experience uh, with uh, mobile technologies. And in TV3 we believe that uh, we have a very interesting road to go. It has uh, not been used sufficiently. The interaction that you can achieve through your mobile phone, uh, which is the most, most used device to browse the internet, it's uh, more than 50% is uh, done, is browsed through mobile phones and that should not be forsaken. It is a device that everybody has, uh, has on them the whole day long. And I wanted to to talk a little bit from a broadcaster's point of view. When we uh, broadcast a linear documentary, we, we have this audience on TV, and for us, this is the time of, mo of a high, highest concentration of users. When we... Uh, And when we broadcast an interactive documentary, how many people will l l watch it? The effort that we have to make uh, for people to uh, get to know the interactive documentary, to get in on, on the internet and so on, well, it's uh, very, very big. Uh, but when we broadcast a 15-minute linear documentary <coughs> on TV, we have 200,000 or 400,000 or 600,000 people look, watching the documentary for 15 minutes straight. And if we translate this into interactive uh, documentaries, that we're talking about eight, ten minutes. So we have to think about that, because all oh, that audience, the potential audience, which is that is watching TV at a certain point in time. How many people are watching the documentary broadcast by TV3, by the Catalan Television? And how many of those are watching the documentary and we tell them, we also have an interactive documentary, you can get more in information on the internet through this in interactive documentary. How many of them will remember uh, the URL or will remember to get online at some point and look at it for a few minutes? Well, it's very restricted. Actually, it's a very small number of people. And... It is about uh, making the most of uh, the, the broadcast time. We have to make the most of it, just to say, okay, in uh, web, the web doc has much more information. It's not so much, uh, it, it's not so much about uh, providing the contents that we have not given on TV, but it's a different way of telling the story and another phenomenon which uh, we need to keep in mind, even if it might seem a little bit overdone. This is a, a real image. It's what happens in many homes. Everybody ha is watching TV with a second device in their hands at the same time, using other devices at the same time while watching TV. And we have to make the most of this uh, context. So people are not only watching TV, but doing a couple of things at the same time. And... Uh, we should uh, take advantage to seize the opportunity uh, of the interactive uh, documentary and the linear documentary at the same time. It might be uh, something that happens at the same time or parallel to the broadcast on TV. And this could be... Uh, mm, mm, This could be used much more, the, con the notion of the second screen, and there's a lot uh, to do, a lot to explore there, and to research there. We have to go much more into that. Well, thank you very much for your attention. Muy bien. Vamos a un par de preguntas. We have a, a couple of minutes for questions for Ferran Clavel. Do you have any questions about production, about contest? Is there going to be another contest uh, next year, perhaps? I don't know whether I should ask that question. Are you thinking about a new edition? 
this year or maybe next year any ideas about that first of all we want to close this edition in the next few weeks as i was telling you about with the results of the selected project and then we will think about this uh, the next edition but i cannot say anything more specific than that for now santi fort you have a question please wait for the microphone thank you what you have shown at the end about the second screen with a complementary content to the, to the first screen, might that help to improve the funding of uh, the content? Because uh, they might go to a different kind of content. The second screen uh, plays different roles. First, it uh, increases the loyalty of uh, the audience. There's another reason uh, to uh, watch it now, not watch it later on. So you can really focus the viewer. It's a um, value, uh, an added value to playing with both screens. And then it can be another source of income. Because when you broadcast a documentary on TV, it's the highest expectation, time of highest expectation, more people around this content. And then it's very difficult uh, to get those uh, users to go on the internet and watch it there. It's more complicated. There are thousands of people watching it. We have to seize the moment and we can attract uh, perhaps attract even sponsors for that. There's another question from Sergi Cameron. We have a microphone over there. The question is, in the future, if everything goes well, to uh, present a project including interactive and linear, what, is the, what, is, what, what do we have to knock on the departments that will be in touch with each other? Or how, uh, what, where do you have to go? Well, that's a good question. What we have done here, well, this context is together with our department, with the documentary department of TV3. There are two departments, one which is specialized in documentaries, the other on digital videos, and we work together. So the next edition well, will be similar to this one, uh, which will be different from a linear department, but it depends on the demands of the industry for the production of linear documentaries on TV. The uh, system is very closed, very well established, uh, they're with uh, closed budget budgets, and the industry does not want to um, divest uh, some of that money for in to interactive uh, documentaries, so we might need an additional budget uh, to fund that. I understand, I met, that's what I figured, uh, but regarding the synchronization of both format so which is which is the way to do it which which one is the way to do it or how do you think it will be in the future well so far if you have a project uh, mixing or combining a linear and an interactive documentary they are submitted differently through different channels although we coordinate our work and if a project for linear documentary on TV is um, uh, selected uh, well uh, usually separate from a uh, it usually together with, goes together with an interactive project, but it could be a different way. Sergei, uh, can you give the microphone to, well, the last question. Another question uh, pract of practical nature, I don't know. Out of the 80, 28 uh, projects that have been submitted, how many uh, have the involvement of uh, TV3? I don't remember. It's a very hard question. I'd, I'd... Well... Thank you very much for run. It has been a pleasure and see you next time.